Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. I think looking back at the year of 2019, you'll notice that Steam did a lot of things to improve the entirety of their platform. I should say Valve did a lot of things to improve Steam as a platform, but you get the idea. And in today's video, I want to take a look at five major things that Steam did in 2019 that I think benefited a lot involved. Not only the consumers, but a lot of the developers and just made Steam an overall more competent platform. I want to give a shout out to happygamer.com that has a really good rundown of all of the changes that Steam implemented this year. I'm only going to go over the five major ones, but I'll leave a link to them in the description box below if you want a rundown of everything. So without further ado, let's get right into it and let's start off with number one, which I think was the most noticeable and obvious change, and that is the change to Steam libraries and the layout. Now, this is something that was a little bit controversial just because I think some people were used to Steam as a platform. They were used to the simplistic layout that Steam had. However, I think I think the majority of people have also at this point gotten used to the new layout and I think the majority of people like it. For some people, it's a little bit too cluttered. For me, I really like everything that the library has. I like all of the customizability options and I like that how you got a lot of images, a lot of articles posted and you can change the different layouts. You've got collections. And again, there's a lot of customizability. Customizability has seemed to have been the name of the game this year in regards to Steam, and I think the library changes was a clear showcase of that. Now, the issue with the library changes, I think the older library and the layout of that was established for so, so long. Like, think about with a console. Every console cycle, you're gonna get a new layout and people are gonna be introduced to a new design, and that's kind of accepted. However, with Steam, it's been so long with the same layout that it's been more than a generational five to six years with that layout. It's been like, what, two generations? And to change that, yeah, it's gonna be a stark difference right away. However, I think ultimately it's gonna be a lot more pleasing to everyone involved. So Steam library change is definitely the biggest noticeable change that I think Steam has implemented in 2019. Number two, and this is a pretty major one that I don't think a lot of people take advantage of. However, I'm happy that Steam implements features like this that are gonna cater towards a smaller portion of people for now, and that is Steam Remote Play, and more importantly, Steam Remote Play together. Remote Play came out back in June of this year, and that saw in-home streaming replaced with Remote Play streaming, allowing users to go anywhere with their library. It was experimental... And it would eventually would lead to thousands of gamers playing at work on their cell phones and simply wasn't near the level of polish that many are expecting today. However, just it being implemented is really cool. But I think even cooler is remote play together. This is something that I really wasn't expecting. I don't think a lot of people are going to take advantage of it at this point. However, I do think it can develop into something a lot more compelling. But you have to get the foundation in place first. On the back of Steam's remote play comes remote play together. This tech allows your friends to join you on specific games without them needing to purchase those games. And if the games feature local multiplayer, they can play as if they were there. It's kind of a cool feature. Obviously, there's the issue of internet latency and all those issues. You're talking about streaming a game, and then you're playing a game as if they were locally there. Obviously, if you're playing like a fighting game, a little bit of issue there. But the idea is really cool, and if developers know about remote play together being a thing ahead of the release of the game, you can design a game surrounding this feature. Now, I don't know if developers are going to do that anytime soon. However... There are other titles that kind of naturally fell into the category of working really well. They branch into split screen when you bring your friend on board for some cooperative play. And some titles can even keep all the action on the screen. Party titles like Stick Fight the Game. And again, the only hiccup is if you're not getting decent data reception, which anything with streaming, obviously you gotta have good internet. That's doubly so when you're talking about games. That's doubly so when you're the one that's streaming a game to your friend, and then your friend is also playing the game with you. There's a lot of room for error here, but the idea of remote play together I think is absolutely fascinating, and if we can develop it into it becoming better and better, I do think it could be a standout feature on Steam. Right now, it's not getting the attention, and kind of deservingly so. It's not polished all there. Some people just don't have the internet capabilities, but I think in a couple of years, it could turn out to be something that is quite notable on Steam. All right, next up, Steam did an overhaul to all of their social features, and this is something a lot of people wanted to see. 2019 saw Steam getting a new overhaul of their social features, and it really needed that. The update allowed a lot of things. Favoriting of certain friends on the Steam platform, letting users drag and drop other profiles to keep tabs on what they 
they're playing. Many titles have opted to take advantage of the rework, where the friends list will also update what's going on in your friends' games. Counter-Strike reports what you're playing, and the current score where Risk of Rain 2 reports the distance covered thus far in your current run. Small updates like this just make Steam a more complete platform, and it just keeps user investment up. And again, if it's easier to see what your friends are playing, it's going to make discoverability of games easier. And hey, you see all your friends playing it, you see all of the metrics that they're covering, maybe that entices you a little bit more to buy that game. I don't know, just little things like that. It's not like it's taking away anything. It's not like this is detracting anything. But overall, there's no other way that you can see it outside of it just being a net positive and the social features being updated, I thought was a great addition. And more social features like this that keep people engaged to one another, especially in the party and social community that we live in when we're talking about games in 2019 heading into 2020. It just makes all the sense in the world and very happy that Steam implemented those features as well. All right, so I just talked a little bit about discoverability. However, what was really the biggest factor to discoverability in 2019? That is, of course, Steam Labs. Now, does this have any direct consumer impact? Not necessarily, but it does have the parlaying effect, and this is really efficient and effective for developers that are releasing their games on Steam, which is just as important. The issue with Steam these days is you got a billion games coming out. Okay, maybe not literally a billion, but damn near close. And it's really hard to find a lot of the quality titles. Hell, it seems like every day I'm finding new games that I didn't even know existed. Well, Steam Labs isn't the overall remedy to that issue. However, it definitely is a step in the right direction. It has been added due to the usage of Steam Labs allowing indie titles that never received their share of the spotlight to be found by users of the platform, along with larger titles that may have been temporarily discarded in favor of a better shiny title. Steam Labs is about Valve's developers coming up with an idea and then letting everyone see the result. They typically centered around machine learning and letting users discover new titles that have previously escaped their vision. So obviously, there are gonna be some issues here and there with machine learning, but it's better than nothing. And regarding consumers being matched with their next game addiction, and developers that may have released at inopportune times, which is a real thing. I mean, there are, again, a billion games coming out. There might be a time where one game just gets the lion's share of attention, and that's unfortunate. And that's nothing to do with the developer creating a bad game or the developer doing something dumb. You gotta get the game out when it's ready and sometimes it's just inopportune, especially if you have a publisher pushing you to release a game at a specific time period. That's no fault of the developer, but if Steam can do whatever they can to help discoverability even long after the game came out, obviously it's difficult because you have so many games coming out, and after one game comes out, another 3 million games will come out, so it's always a battle, and it's always hard, especially with the short attention spans that people have, to sit down, click the button, and actually delve into a game and look into a game, not even necessarily buying it, but at least research the game. See if it's something that would be up your alley. People saying that games are not good anymore. I can't believe people even say that just because there are a plethora and plethora of games being released. Yeah, not all of them are great. I give you there's a lot of not good on Steam, but I also give you the fact that there is a lot of good. I mean, there's a reason why my wish list is like 700 games deep at this point. Yeah, maybe not all of those games are good, but a large portion of them are probably pretty good. And if you offer the users a way to discover the games in an easier fashion, that is going to go a long way, not only for the consumer, but for the developers that's trying to make ends meet selling these games. A lot of these games, man, they're not making a lot of money off of it. And if you can do anything to get these games to the consumer, obviously the consumer is going to appreciate that because they're discovering new games. But from a developer standpoint, that put hours and hours and hours, years even, goes a long way in pleasing both parties. And lastly, here's something that I don't talk much about, but Steam really made a lot of strides here, and that is Proton and Steam Play. Steam Proton was released all the way back in 2018. However, in 2019, Proton made vast strides in bringing Linux gaming to Linux. Steam Play is the front aspect of Proton, and Proton was built by Steam to open a large segment of games for Linux users. Obviously, it's not going to be every game. Steam has so many games, but more and more high quality and very notable titles are making their way over to Linux. And obviously you have Wine, and that has been the go-to process for years, bringing a compatibility layer between the two, but Proton builds upon it, running from the Wine base for facilitation. Proton is built right into Steam, and you've got titles like Nier Automata, Monster Hunter World, and they can all be played on Linux. Now it is noted, Steam has over 30k titles in their library, 6,000 or so are deemed to be fully playable on Linux, however, this is absolutely going to be a work in progress. If you can make it better and better, and make games more so playable on Linux than ever before, that not only is great for the consumer that does use Linux because now more games are playable. But again, from a developer standpoint, that opens up a new audience to actually play your game, sell more copies, make more revenue. It's a net positive for everyone involved and a great update to Steam in 2019.
And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, I know a lot of you guys have had your qualms with Steam in recent years. Maybe because their support isn't the best, which I can definitely agree with. Steam support is pretty terrible at times. However, in 2019, I think it was a year of many strides being made. Again, I'll leave a link to happygamer.com because they do have a very in-depth rundown on a lot of other features that Steam introduced in 2019, and it's a really well-done article. And I only covered five, and they have even more there. So check that out if you're interested. That's gonna conclude this video. If you guys have a request for a future video, you can leave that in the comment section down below and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.